let's start with um, the brain, of course. We all have one, obviously, and we better um, use it. Brain represents what? We're talking about 80 billion neurons. We're talking 100 trillion connections. That sounds a lot. You probably don't have a benchmark for that, but it's, it is a lot. It's, it's really in, uh, impressive because our brain is the most advanced biological structure in the known universe. I say known universe because with the aliens you never know, of course. But the, it, it is a really a feat of, of uh, biology, of, of development. So we can do all kind of fancy stuff with that brain of ours. And uh, for example, yeah, mathematics. Who knows what two times two? Okay, I want to, I will not insult your intelligence here. Of course, it's four. Good. L slightly up, 11 times 70. How much would that be? Yeah, exactly. Now, let's go one step up. Start calculating and don't use your, I, uh, your phone, please. How much is 23 times 117.49? Yeah? No one? Okay, who is actually doing the math now? Please raise your hand. Who is actually doing the math? We've got one, two. That's actually more or less it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that is because our brain is lazy. And all of you, besides those two, you're probably thinking, eh, do I really need to know that? That's not important. Uh, let the other figure it out. And why we do that? We all do that. Our brain is actually lazy. By the way, it's 2,702.27. Who cares? Exactly. It's not important. Why? Uh, our brain automatically, automatically will know um, we'll try to figure out what is important and what is not. It's actually an energy thing, and it has everything to do with Daniel Kahneman. Who knows, has heard about Daniel Kahneman before? Daniel Kahneman is probably the um, most well-known, um, the most influential, influential psychologist alive. Daniel Kahneman explains in his fantastic book, Thinking Fast and Slow, I'm making some publicity for him here. Uh, he's explaining how uh, we basically in our brain, we have two operational systems. So um, the, the normal one, oh, by the way, s scientists are so creative when it comes to names, right? So the first one, two operational systems. The first one we call system one. The second one, very creative. System two. Right, so system one is the one we always use. It's basically the standard operational procedure. We're always in system one. System one is everything we do all the time uh, when we're in a situation that we're uh, used to, that we, uh, that we are, uh, uh, that, well, in, in, in everyday life, we're always in system one. The great thing about system one, it's, it's, it's unconscious, it's fast, as he says, associative, it's basically your autopilot. Now, whenever we hit a roadblock, or at least a challenge, a problem, a something that we're not used to, and that system one cannot solve, we're supposed to switch to system two. System two is about problem solving, it's, it's, but it takes effort, it's, it's energy uh, demanding, and uh, it's slower, it's logical, you probably will have to get to, yeah, to, to, to really think things through, just like with the 22, 23 times, I don't know what, well, uh, that, that calculation got you, uh, you were supposed to switch to system two, and you did not. Why? Because it is lazy. Our brain is lazy. Well, technically speaking, it's energy efficient. So next time someone calls you lazy, you can say, no, 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 I'm energy efficient. Anyway, the point is, why is it lazy? Our brain represents more or less 2% of our body mass. However, it uses 20% of the energy of our body. 20%. That's a huge discrepancy between both. So, um, and system one is, has automated everything. We do not use that much energy in system one. Whenever we switch to system two, it's much more, not only energy demanding, but it's also uh, linked to our mental reserves, etc. And uh, in the beginning of the day, we have plenty of that. At the end of the day, we, we don't. So uh, throughout the day, that reserve goes down. Um, I'll talk about that and the whole concept of ego depletion later on. Now, the... Um, the problem with system one is that usually we, well, 
So we are in system one most of the time. We're, when we're, we hit a roadblock, a problem that we need to solve, we are supposed to switch to system two. Exactly like all of you did not to switch to system two, that happens over time and time again. Our brain doesn't like to switch to system two. System one is actually some kind of a, a tyrant. He likes to keep control over things. Even though we, we, sh we would be better off switching to system two, we remain in system one. We really need to take that extra effort to switch from system one to system two. So 95% of the time we're in system one, only 5% of the time we actually go to that system two. And whenever we remain in system one, when we're supposed to go to system two, that's when we feel stress. But I'm not going to talk about stress because otherwise I'll be busy <laughs> the rest of the hour or even day about that one. Good. So that's for Kahneman. Basically, um, we have we have several uh, we have several systems working in our brain, non-conscious uh, non-conscious systems operate, uh, operating constantly and uh, which make us do things and react in certain ways. Now, um, and the, these are all in system one. And we're talking about things like stay safe. This is the classical uh, fight, flight and freeze response, right? Um, it's, it's, it's embedded in us. We, we don't even control it. It just happens. Um, we're talking about things like avoiding danger. So basically, uh, you're walking the street, you see someone having a fight over there, you will not go there to try to solve things and let's be happy all together. No, no, you, you'll avoid that and you'll just walk on. The, the third one is about, about avoiding wasting energy. A link to what I said about uh, system one and system two. Basically, in all three uh, scenarios, that was very, very useful some 50,000 years ago or more uh, when, you had to, uh, when you had to face a pack of wolves or, or, or hungry bear, well, staying safe was a good option. Stay, uh, you, you start to fight or flight or freeze to try to survive that. You avoid danger when you see those wolves or bear uh, in the distance. And avoid, avoiding wasting energy is extremely useful as well the moment you are, um, the moment you, well, you, you always need to have enough energy because if you enter, uh, if you end up walking into one of those bears or wolves or whatever, uh, you better be able to run and use that energy to uh, a good use. Problem here is who here has been in contact with a pack of wolves or bear in the last 20 years? Please raise your hand. That's the problem. Those things were really great 50,000, 200,000 years ago. Nowadays, it is not applicable anymore. We are, uh, we, we are not uh, using them any, anymore the way they, uh, it was intended to. We are not in the same environment, in the same context, in the same world than we were when that brain of ours developed. So we need to, uh, we were supposed to adapt to, and we did to a certain uh, extent adapt to it, because now the, the stress that we feel, the stress response, is still coming from the same limbic amygdala, uh, which is triggering this staying safe, avoiding danger, etc. response. However, um, it, it makes us feel and do and react to things in a way that is not helpful for us. The number one enemy of our brain is stress. Stress eats away our brain, literally kills brain cells. That's not good. Why do we have that? Well, we, if you look at evolution, th th there's a reason for that. But nowadays, in a world where, where we have, we live together with hundreds of thousands or millions of people in cities, and we, uh, we are co in constant contact with uh, technology, and we, we don't have that physical danger way less than before, from time to time, it still may be applicable. Uh, if, if you cross a road and there's a car coming and you have to jump away, yes, that might help you. But, but the, the, in essence, those programs are way too potent for, this, for, for, for what they serve today. So that is a real problem. Sharpen.